Hey everybody, Garrett Hartle here. Welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. This has got to be like the most exciting locality day here that I've ever had all at once. And I'm not very good at geeking out, but we brought somebody who was. Oh my god! Let's see, I can't believe it. It's so cute. Yeah, then I can pass out. That was the most incredible no, thing I've ever done since owning reptiles. Karampa female number two, ready to lay any day. Poor girl, looks like she's gonna explode. Okay, then we have Karampa babies that are starting to hatch, so we're gonna cut those. And right here, a little bit of a surprise. I don't know if you guys can see that beehive up there, that beautiful beehive, but that is a pure slayer on a clutch of eggs. So we're gonna pull the eggs. But most exciting is that, because I'm, you know, like have a dead heart and emotionally constipated, we brought somebody who is overly emotional to help share this experience with you guys. We're gonna pull this thing, maybe get bit. She's not the nicest female, she's not terrible either, but Slayers, I mean, they're highly active. <laughs> yeah. Very they're strong. Agile. Take a look at this. I love these shells for the way we keep the snakes, and it almost doubles the usable square footage. Obviously, the snakes like them, but they refuse to lay in their boxes, no matter what I do. They just lay up on the shelf, and there's a lip right here meant to hold the substrate in, and if I ever try to pull them, it just is so hard. It tears all the eggs up. She's way up top. This is going to be a pain. I was only suspicious that she was gravid. We haven't had that this girl here very long. So I knew she was either gonna lay eggs or die. Looks like she laid eggs. So I hopefully that means she won't die. I told you I was emotionally constipated. <laughs> you know the rules, right? I'm gonna go over it anyways. Mm -hmm. If she's gonna bite you, you have to let her bite you. You cannot drop the eggs. I don't care if she Sounds latches onto deal. your face. If you can't handle this, move away. You know, it's all about those eggs. Do not bleed on eggs. That's really mm -hmm. bad. So don't roll the eggs. We're gonna put this in like a spatula, flip the paper over the top of her. Mm -hmm. remove the whole thing and then we'll go set her down on these shelves over here so we have a stable spot and then uh, unwrap her real carefully I'll take care of the female if you take care of the egg ready Tim O'Reilly did this perfectly once. He offered her his forearm, she bit and wrapped him, came right off the eggs, popped on the floor. If you don't let her target in on your eyes, you should, be, head to you should be okay. I don't either, but I know where her eggs are at. Okay, right. look behind, make sure we didn't her lose an egg. There. We did lose an egg, her head's up there. All right, that's fine. You got her. Distracted. Get the egg. Get the egg. I don't care if she gets me. Okay, good. Drop it now. What are you messing around with that? Okay, watch out. Here we go. Alright, there's These two are... about to fall right there. Alright, grab it. Here. Got him? Yep. Get him right side up. Alright, if these roll, they get a long drop. I have a bunch of infertiles. But we do have some good ones. Okay, here. Get this egg right here. Ready? I'm going to pull it apart. I'm telling you, man. Don't worry about that thing. See the side that was originally down? Yep. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Get that pokey thing away from the eggs. <laughs> I'm not the one bleeding on the end. <laughs> if you're worried about her. I'm not that worried about her. something. But they all here fell. we go. Best <laughs> snake tool ever. All right. If we can get her. Come on, baby. Nothing's stretching. Right? Like, no, no. Oh, there's a smudge here. Oh, she got you good. How can you tell? I have a glove. It conceals all wounds. Oh, all right. This is an infertile. A little football ends. We're not even going to try with those. We know they're bad. If you get one that's like halfway this way, they can match. When they're all the way that way, they can't. The infertiles don't stick very well. So if we can get them out, that's, those are good. Boob egg. That's a boob egg, but the boob eggs can hatch. Here, don't bite. Come on, baby. Looking. Got him? Yep. That's a boob egg. That boob egg is good. 
They're no, all good. Come, no, let's move back. Alright. Come on, Mama. Good girl. Oh, no. Now we gotta. <laughs> gotta <rock laughs> right Woo. Look at this, guys. Can you see this? Look how skinny she is. She's oh, I was like, hey, she's grabbing or she's gonna die. Those laying a bunch of infertiles like that is pretty hard on them. She's got a lot of uh, weight to regain. Good girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so beautiful. We, we uh, saved myself from the attack of the good mom. Slayer. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. I had uh, pictures sent to me one time of a female that was actually wrapped around her eggs as a forest fire came through. Mm -hmm. And she curled up on the eggs and burnt to death. And the eggs were fine? And the eggs were fine. Mm. That's awesome. So, I mean, Wait, people horrible. think reptiles are... Awesome. No, that's it's pretty cool. It says a lot mm. to the character of the animals. So, now we just pulled one pure locality breeding the Slayers. And here we have this other one. This is pretty special. Slayers haven't been produced in four years. So that's pretty cool. A long time. Um, we have Jampeas that are about to hatch next month. Those haven't been produced in about a decade. Um, we have Kalatoas incubating, which I try every year, but... Those little boogers will, will trick you. And these, though, are the Karampas, which have never been bred in the U.S. There's only five adults that I know of. I've been trying for these for 14 years. So as far as I'm concerned, this is like my greatest contribution to reptiles ever. I don't know what to do after this. <laughs> so go ahead. Well, Chris is going to cut them because I've got blood on my fingers. So. so why don't you start over here with egg number one. <laughs> And these are really tiny, so make sure you don't cut too My deep. My big, dainty fingers. Oh, so basically, we had one pip, which tells us that the rest of the clutch is ready to go. I never cut eggs until one starts cutting on its own, because uh, that gives me the timing of each individual clutch with all of the you know different fa factors like incubation temperatures. and. I mean, we've never hatched Karampas before, so who knows? Maybe they're a little... You look shaky, bud. Well, it's because they're so small and they're so special. Yeah, don't cut my small special stuff. So the second one, Ashley over there wanted to cut. Yeah, we got Garrison with us too. It's a momentous occasion. Um, cut this little guy, um, and we, we cut one just to take a peek and make sure the others were developing okay, because I was a little worried. Um, but uh, And he's fine, but he was totally wrapped up in his umbilical cord. It was right around his neck like a necktie. So we're going to go ahead and, and cut the rest of these. So what did you get here? Looks like a karampa. <laughs> I was pretty proud of my nephew, JJ, who's three, when his dad showed up. He goes, Dad, we got karampas. <laughs> Most people in the snake industry can't say that. <laughs> my three-year-old nephew knows all about well, it. I came here to look at these and we ended up pulling a Slayer clutch. I haven't seen that many Slayers, let alone pull a clutch. I thought you said that was the first one you ever laid eyes on. Slayer? Yes. Okay, so just to add pressure, there has been a wild-caught albino karampa found. Really? Yes, some kind of albino form. It's not the same strain. So if we get a, an albino, that's a small island. That's a limited gene pool. Uh, the other thing that is... That would be the most gnarly thing. Any or all of these could be anery. This one, last night, this one looked really brown. That cut on its own. This one looked really silver, I see that. but I think it's probably a little too early to call it. By the way, Chris drove from how many hours away? Uh, about five. <laughs> it's a once not, in a lifetime he's not, thing. He's not getting these. Yeah, it's a once in a lifetime thing. Supposed to be a part of the moment. You're making me nervous. You're making me nervous. <laughs> They're so tiny. I told you he was a lot more emotional than me. I am. We're getting the reactions out of you because I don't react to anything. Oh man. Oh that gosh. one's beautiful. Yeah. The cool thing is they're like Karampa for sure. If you see the pattern, classic Karampa look. Very busy, very chaotic. This one's insane too. They're all Pixar, insane. it didn't happen. Look at that. Karampas are cool because they always look like three snakes in one. You get these kind of like the Sulawesi donuts yep. Yep. down the center of the back a lot of times. You get the silver. And then, the and then you get these, like it almost looks like the pattern's melted and dripping down the sides on the tail. And then the neck is, is extremely aberrant. They're so tiny it's hard to see, but there's like a spot right here where it's like eight scales wide of black on a really chaotic pattern. I don't know, these look very annery, some of them, but I would expect to see differences. Like, we're gonna have to wait till they get out and shed. I cannot wait till they come here's out. Another, here's another little karampa trait. See the little spot within the saddle there on that one? That's something the karampas do. They tend to have really big, this is towards the tail where the pattern kind of melts down. I can't stop looking at them. They're so this cute. This too, good lord. Oh my gosh. Patterns like you've never seen. 
I cannot wait can, till they are out of this. These eggs. That's cool. That one's my favorite. Aiden likes to pick favorites so that he can make most of the snakes feel bad. These are definitely the most distinct locality of super dwarfs I've ever worked with. Um, and I think we're gonna make five dwarf and super dwarf pure localities this season, which would be fantastic. Um, but, uh, and that's a community effort. A lot of them are on breeding loan with other, other people that I work with. But um, yeah, they're so tiny, right? Mm -hmm. Even when you're used to super dwarves, these things are really tiny. But they're extremely distinct. Not only are they small, they act very different. They're, they're very mellow compared to other super dwarves. You know, they're a lot more calculated. Nice one. Yeah, then I can pass out. <laughs> oh, the head's right there. Oh my god. Let's see. Oh, this one's starting to come out too. Please nibble me. It'll mean the world to me if you did. <laughs> I got bit by a Garoppa, guys. This one's pushing. Oh my gosh. My pinky nail is bigger than its whole head. Yeah. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. <laughs> when you really it's start so to get perfect. in there and start looking at those patterns, how chaotic it's so they perfect. are. Oh man. So before anybody asks, this was a joint breeding with a friend of mine, John Schreer, and his wife, Risha. And uh, so the, the female belongs to them. So they're gonna get half of this clutch. Then if we get the right sex ratios, we're going to release one pair. And really it's only for the purpose to kind of establish a precedent for these to be actually sold within the pet trade. We wanna show how desirable the captive bred ones are over these wild caught adults that are being imported to other places around the world and what buyers, potential buyers need to realize is this is a, the island that these guys come from is a little bit bigger than New York Central Park. And I think I've seen like 30 to 40 wild caught adults removed from the breeding population. We need to establish them and some of those, some of the things it's like, if you want it done right, you gotta do it yourself. But I've been campaigning with uh, AZA accredited um, organizations for the last six months just to, to educate them on why these are so important. Unfortunately, these do not carry their own subspecies or species name yet, so there's very little interest in, in conserving them, but I'm confident that these will actually be their own subspecies and or species of reticulated pythons with more study. So we're contributing genetic sampling to get that studies done, and I'm going to try to, to actually donate what I can out of my babies without compromising the, the breeding colony here and genetic diversity that's gonna be needed. The AZA actually has a chance of establishing a captive bred population that could repopulate the wild if needed. So 11 baby Karambas, guys, they all look healthy to me, they huh? Great. So that's a huge accomplishment, but again, it, 11 babies pales in comparison to the 40 adults that could be breeding and producing clutches every year that are still being removed from the wild. Do you want to pat one with one finger? No, that's fine, just leave them. Ooh. Kerson, you're the first kid to ever pet a Karampa, Captain <laughs> Bread Karampa. What do you think about Certainly that? Certainly the first five-year-old. Feels good. Feels good. That was the most Nose incredible thing out. I've ever done since owning reptiles. It's definitely the it's most incredible thing. Karampa. And I just held the camera. Pretty dang cool. I don't know what to do next. <laughs>